I'm happy to uh, welcome you to our first booth talk of the last day of the 2021 OCRS. And I'm very happy to introduce you to a very, well, I would say very well-known uh, guest, not only in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, but worldwide, Professor Gordmark uh, Dick from the University uh, Clinic of Bochum. Uh, and it's a pleasure, it's the first time that we are working Likewise. in a setting in a setting like this. And uh, you have chosen uh, for us today a very special chattering case where you are using the early uh, a high frequency capsulotomy, actually a tool which has been around for quite a while and often is a little bit forgotten that it exists, but it can be extremely useful in certain cases. And I'm very much looking forward that you are going to explain us how you're using it, what the advantages of it, and uh, we're looking forward to the case. Thank you for being with us. Oh my God, thank you so much for this very kind introduction. I'm a little bit humble to be honest. Uh, because uh, it's a great honor here to stand here in front of you and uh, talk about an earthly product where I would say it is, hasn't been used to that extent, not only, but uh, is something where I think it is valuable to teach people, especially the younger generations, on the use of this because it has it's been a forgotten technology. Similar to others like the ICCE or ECCE, they still have their indications, it's rare, but the younger patients and especially the younger colleagues have forgotten this technology or haven't even seen it. Yeah. So and this is similar with this uh, high frequency capsulotomy, which is a great device and um, can be not only used in the case I will show you, but also in so many other cases that have been not been made popular or published or so. Think about, for example, phimosis, where there is a capsular phimosis, where usually people try to yak it, for example, if the lens has been encapsulated by the capsule because of loose sonules or by excessive capsular back shrinkage, etc. Where I would say this is the ideal thing because with the femtosecond laser, you can cut, but not these strands and these thicker things. And this is just one single example I can remember. So, uh, having used this for decades now, and it has been a little bit forgotten, as uh, Mr. Bossart pointed out, uh, I just want to bring it back now, uh, because it's an ideal method for lens opening. It's a gentle alternative, especially uh, you melt the capsular edge which is very nice compared to other devices like the septo or the capsule laser where you really cut it and not using heat to that extent. Here you are using uh, heat, which is especially important for weak sonules, patients with the wobbling lens, let's say this way, where you see, okay, even tearing is a challenge here. Uh, of course, the intumescent cataracts that are under pressure yeah, I'm not talking about the white cataracts that can be done easily, but you can detect lenses that are under pressure with OCT, by the way. Yeah, if you do a preoperative OCT, you will see lacoons, that is a, 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 a darkening in the anterior part of the capsule and in the lens. And this darkening tells you that there is fluid. And once there is fluid, the lens is under pressure, which makes the complete case difficult, more difficult and is a nice warning sign and also good then to indicate the use of the high frequency capsulotomy here in this case. Also, of course, small pupil is an issue. You can elevate easily the OVD underneath the iris and then go underneath and do it blind because you can trust in the technology. It always works, of course. And for example, a missing red reflex. What does that mean? Well, for people like uh, Mr. Klaber, who is here, uh, it's uh, for pasplana vitrectomy, where there, there is a bleeding in the eye, you still prefer, may prefer doing a cataract surgery first, because of the, if the vitreous is out, the lens really uh, has great movements out of the focus, and you cannot, to that extent, compensate in terms of safety. So if you can then do an anterior capsulotomy with a high frequency, it helps you out a lot, because staining, if there is no red reflex, is not, a, not an issue. Tripe and blue or something like that, they will definitely not help you at all. 
Yeah. Also in black cataract, for example, or let's say brown to very advanced red cataracts, where there is also no red reflex, the staining is not helpful. Yeah. So you need something that opens the anterior capsule reliably, controls, centered, right size, etc. And that is with this device. Also, by the way, I mean, I'm doing pediatric cataract and everybody of you knows how difficult it is to do an anterior capsulorexis in a pediatric eye. You always tend to be as small as possible because always you will be too big. Yeah. So the smaller you try, even you get a bigger and larger capsul capsulorexis or capsulotomy. This is also true for the femtosecond laser, by the way. That's the reason why we developed the Bochum formula, which helps you. And also for this technology, what you are looking for in terms of aiming the diameter. But the nice thing here is you don't need this formula because you can then enlarge it. You start with a very small one and then you enlarge it as you want. But always having in mind there is by far more retraction forces in these pediatric eyes than in normal cataracts, age-related cataracts. And here's the good thing, you have a handpiece that is very short and very ergonomic in the hands. You can see the rifles here, so that uh, you have a sufficient long cable that's three meters, that is sufficient enough to just go through the room. And you have also a long handpiece, of course, if you want. And what is also important, uh, you have uh, different capsulotomy tips that are attached to this handpiece. You just plug it in and that's it. And um, it's um, 0.5 millimeter. Here you see the um, specifications. Some of you, of course, are interested in technology. And this uh, good thing here is that it fits through the side port incision, which is also good, but also to the main incision. If you go through the main incision, you definitely want also some kind of OVD in the AC. But if you don't want this, you can just irrigate with your, with your one hand, with an irrigation, and then go through the other paracentesis with the uh, high frequency tip. Yeah. And we are talking about 500 kilohertz as a specific output value and regularly have 7.8. But Interestingly, you can even increase this if this is a really dense plaque where you really see, oh, I need more, you can then elevate the energy here. So let's see what happens in a real world clay case. I would say it had provided me a perfect uh, control. And um, also thank you to uh, Mr. Haubenschmidt to help me to produce this video. Um, and uh, here you see such a case. This is a white cataract. I start with Blumenthal paracentesis at the size port. As I'm sitting at the 12 o'clock position in this case. It depends on the initial preoperative astigmatism. You do an anterior um, 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 irrigation of um, uh, mitriasis, so, and then I'm staining and, and, and looking to control. You see, I'm not so safe, so, so sure how to handle this case and what to expect, especially in terms of if there is any fluid egress or something like that, what I do, what, I, what might happen, of course. So also a trick is to go over past with the leading cannula to the angle of the other side and then stay there, remain there and inject the OVD so that you get rid of the entire fluid in the anterior chamber and have a homogeneous fill of the OVD in the anterior chamber. And now you can see here the tip under the microscope from Ertley. Uh, it is reusable, that's a good thing, so costs are virtually no. And the device is integrated in the machine, that's also important to know, yeah? so you don't need to buy another system or something like that, it's just integral part here. And so it's the only thing is this needle at no cost virtually, yeah, because you can reuse and reuse and reuse it, is of course, after sterilization. So in this case, now you move and it's under topical anesthesia. Some of the um, people here have been at, this, at the surgery personally also because it was a challenging case. And now you dig into the anterior capsule and apply with the foot pedal, the energy. Yeah, that is the way you go. And here you see that there was pressure 
un, in, the, in the lens. Yeah? The fluid is already egressing yeah? through the paracentesis, yes, you may have seen. And now I start with a smaller one because I can always go wider, but the decision to adjust it can be made based on the lens position. That means after IOL implantation, you then redesign the anterior capsulotomy according to the position of the lens. What you want, of course, is a 360 degree overlap of the anterior capsule on the top of the IOL with no, let's say, buttonhole effect or something like that where the capsule is off. Because this may induce, for example, fibrosis, you all know this, a contact in the, uh, um, induction of the fibrometaplastic epithelial cells that then fibrose. And if you are implanting premium IOL or something like that, but this can even lead to a decentration of the lens. So here you see that I intentionally uh, did a smaller capsular opening, but it's already sufficient to work, what you see. Um, and I'm just polishing the capsule, which is usual in the mature cataracts. You often have an adhesional cortex also underneath the anterior capsule, which I use a bimanual polishing device here to polish it 360 degree. That's something I would recommend that you train to be bimanual to do this 360 degree polishing, not just monomanual uh, and just polishing only the um, uh, oppositional position in the back, so to say. And um, this is done meticulously. Um, you may do it or, or you don't think I uh, believe in it. It is a uh, philosophy, but I uh, a little bit of the older generation where uh, Fritz Rentsch, Friedrich Rentsch from Karlsruhe teached us that it's a good thing to uh, polish the anterior capsule. Menapache also was uh, in favor of it and developed different uh, devices, etc. The race is still open if it's a, of benefit or not. For me, it's not a, a negative thing. It, prolongs the surgery maybe for 30 seconds because this is real, real time. Uh, it's not uh, a speed up or something like that. And now I polish it. That's also something I, I learned from Thomas Neuhan, hydro polishing of the posterior capsule with high pressure. But have in mind that you have lure lock, lure lock can, uh, uh, syringes yeah, on top of the cannula. And take care that the, your nurses are assisted in this regard, how to make it, to dial it into the uh, syringe. It's also important, it's a special hand movement because I had a case where I had a lure lock system with a cannula and the cannula sh was shot by me into the anterior chamber with bleeding and everything. So that is an important hint. Now lens implantation, of course, using a preloaded uh, injector system. It's a one piece hydrophobic acrylic lens. I'm a fan of hydrophobic lenses. I only implant hydrophilic lenses when it's necessary. And um, here you see a device that is uh, called uh, a capsular measuring device. It's uh, provided by Goida, and there you can exactly measure the size of the capsular axis or capsular, capsulotomy in millimeter, because it takes into account also the magnification of the cornea, because it's in the eye, it's not on top of the eye or something like that. And here you see it's four millimeter. For me, four millimeter is not sufficient enough. It's too small in these eyes, because you have also still epithelium, and of course there will be shrinkage, and we have shown maybe 15 years ago that if the initial capsulotomy diameter is before and below, there is a greater tendency to capsular back shrinkage than it is with 4.4 and greater. So the cutoff rate for a capsulotomy size is about at 4.3 to 4.4, where I would say it's okay. Yeah, but below, I would not leave the eye from the table, allow it to leave it the eye of the table if you can enlarge it a little bit. There are different ways to enlarge the uh, capsulorexis, of course. That is, for example, using a scissor. That would be another instrument that is now opened and in, uh, introduced. But with the advent and already presence of a high frequency um, uh, needle, of course, you can then again enter into the eye and redesign and reshape the initial shape. So you make it more or less individually customized, what you can see here. So I'm just touching only the edge, having OVD in place. Place. That's the reason why there are some bubbles. These are gas bubbles because of the heat. 
yeah and um, and um, you you see but it's enlarging yeah so I'm, I'm very controlled just for demonstration and education purposes too I'm enlarging the initial capsulorexis or capsulotomy it's not a capsulotomy sorry it's a capsulorexis but via diathermy there have been nice histopathologically and also scanning electron microscopy investigations that the edge is very tight and, and firm so you do not need to fear for example if you insert capsular um, 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 devices holding devices for example or something like that it's not an issue that there will be a tear or something like that it is very firm and it's very uh, adjunct yeah and here you see i'm enlarging it even greater uh, it's a uh, uh, it's now at the size where i would say that's great if you want to speed this up you can also inject another uh, small ovd shot and uh, elevate the energy a little bit the greater the energy the greater the effect of course yeah and here you can see i'm uh, aspirating it already i think that is uh, uh, 4.5 plus uh, capsular rexus size and that is for me sufficient enough always i remove the ovd behind the iol and the case is done so in conclusion it's an forgotten technology if I'm, I'm allowed to say this so a little bit we definitely have a task here that we need to teach the surgeons and the younger generations that this great technology is still existent and it's a really help a great help without costs in order to individualize the capsular opening for better patient care thank you so much